everyone. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper, and welcome back to Build. Today, I'm sitting down with actor and model Luke Eisner, who has worked on campaigns with Ralph Lauren, H&M, and Stuart Weitzman. He's here today to talk about his role in Netflix's Tall Girl, which follows a girl who is insecure about her height until she meets a similarly tall foreign exchange student. Take a look. You know that really, really tall girl that you go to school with? Would you maybe want to... Well, that's me. Uh, um, uh, never, never mind. 16 years old, six foot one and a half. Well, how's the weather up there? Nice sweatpants, Sasquatch. What'd you say to my best friend? A Farida, please. Honey, you just have to be strong in the face of adversity. Oh, I love it. That's the one. You're perfect. I just think it's crazy you won't date a short guy. You really think that at any moment some taller than you perfect guy is just gonna walk through that door? In. You are? No, of course I'm not. The guy got out of customs, what, an hour ago, and she's already marking her territory. How are you liking America so far? I'm liking America very much so far. One day, Jody, you're gonna stand up and say, I love all 73 inches of myself. Hello? Hi, I'm the new exchange student in your school. I was hoping you'd want to go with me to the homecoming test. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I mean. <laughs> Gotcha. Let's face it, Jody. you're the tall girl. I just want you to feel normal. Dad, every time you try to make me feel more normal, you just end up making me feel like more of a freak. I, I need your help. Little sister, I've been waiting for this day to come my entire life. I'm going to extreme makeover the crap out of you. Let's get to work. Push a little heart. So you're telling me that a lip gloss and a lip glass are too many. Oh, stop stressing. I look like grandma's couch. Or a beautiful mermaid princess. Now this is me. I like new Jody. Face your fears, Jody. Going after what you want, Jody. I've been in love with this girl since elementary school, and this new guy blows up my plan. <laughs> You're moving in on my man. No, I'm not. Stay away from him. I will. Stop agreeing with everything I'm saying. Okay. <gasps> We've all got something about ourselves we wish we could change. You're my big little sister. That's me. The only thing that we can control is how we deal with it. When you're a tall girl, it's it's the only thing that people see. It's not the only thing I see. I just want to make sure that you don't get hurt. <laughs> Please help me welcome Luke Eisner. Hey, Luke. Thank you so much. Happy Friday. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You made me. it. I know. I mean, and, and how exciting that you're here talking about, this is your first film? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Right? How yeah. cool is that? It's super exciting. Yeah, there it is. I know. But before yeah. we get into the film, I just want to talk a little bit about your background because you've Please. been modeling for right. a little while now. So how did you get into modeling? When did that Yeah, it's, it's a fun story, actually. I'm from a small town in Wisconsin, so there wasn't a lot of modeling on the radar there. Um, but I uh, moved to L.A. to go to school. And I went to get my hair cut, ironically. And um, my agent was there, and he scouted me getting my hair cut. And he was like, are you a model? And I said, no. And he says, well, you're not getting your hair cut, and you're coming with me. That's amazing. How yeah. long was your hair then? Was it it was, like, yeah, it was about this length, yeah. yeah. So was that scary for you, coming from Wisconsin? And you're like, yeah, I guess I'll go model. Now. Yeah, you know, actually, at first, I didn't, uh, I didn't take it seriously. I, I went with him, and I was like, I thought it was a scam or something like that. Because um, it was you know, such a new world for me. And uh, then he took like my digitals and I went back to school and then he sent me an email saying, you booked H&M campaign, do you wanna go to Portland? So <laughs> that was the start of that. Yeah. H&M was your first campaign? Yes, ma'am. Wow, yeah. and then yeah. what kind of followed after that? What is some of the work that you've done? Yeah, um, American Eagle yeah. I did and that was my first Times Square ad, so I remember seeing that, that was crazy. It was my first time in New York as well. Um, and then I did Calvin Klein and then Ralph Lauren. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, it's been fun. So yes. what is that journey like then into, you know, entertainment in the in the terms of acting? Like, right. did you take class or was it just sort of something that you always wanted to do? Yeah, I, I always wanted to do it. And I, I did take class as well. Um, I didn't know what the path was to get there. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it ended up happening. And I love it because I always wanted to be an author growing up. 
that's what I wanted to be. And so to be a part of music and modeling and acting is one of those things that I just see them as different ways to tell stories, you know? And I always thought it's like it has to be a paperback, but I don't think it does. I think there's different ways to navigate through storytelling. So do you write as well then? Yeah. Is that something yes. you still do? I love to write, yeah. What, do you, what kind of stuff are you writing? Uh, all sorts of stuff. I'm very inspired by romantic novels, so like Nicholas Sparks kind of things, but also children's books. Dr. Seuss, I, I love, and I have a godson, and so I try to write things for him because he lives in Wisconsin, and so I like to be able to send him stuff so he knows I'm thinking of him. Yeah, Nicholas yeah. Sparks. Yeah, of course. Yes, that's fantastic. I could yeah. totally see you in a Nicholas Sparks movie. Oh, oh my gosh. Is you that just, kind you of should say movie? it louder because I would love that, yeah. <laughs> Wait, really quick, what is it about Nicholas Sparks that you love or that kind I, of genre? I, yeah, I think he's a fantastic writer, and I, th I think, like, you know, romance is what motivates us all to do so many different things, and I think it's, it's a really nice escape to, to follow the way that he tells stories so beautifully and um yeah i used to um thank goodness for the kindle that when that came out i could hide all my nicholas sparks <laughs> books on there so i would go to high school i could be like yeah i know i'm reading some sports article you know this is yeah. a popular mechanic on here. yeah right, exactly no exactly um yeah. that's interesting that you're in you're into the romance kind of genre of because this is very much a rom-com yeah. and so this is such a great first film for you right. is that and what drew you to the project yeah that's definitely part of it i mean i i've always wanted to be in a romantic movie but also um reading the script it, it's one of those things that like it's an anti-bullying movie but it doesn't come across like that right away and i think that's really good writing because um like to parallel it, my dad, when he used to give me like cough medicine when I was growing up, he used to say, oh, it's just like cherry syrup. And I used to take it and I used to not know that I was getting medicine. And I think that's the same thing with this movie. I think kids watching it won't know that they're getting this, this huge message. It doesn't feel cheesy like that, but it's entertaining and fun. And then subconsciously they're getting better because they're watching something like this. They're going to treat people nicer. That's the thing. I think my takeaway from it, I got to check it out last night, is that you really okay. don't know what anybody's sort of going through or of dealing course. with. And yeah. you might, uh, I think a lot of people look at Hyde as a good thing. Right. Um, but you don't know you don't that know. person walking down the hall, how they're really feeling about Absolutely, and, and I hope that the kids can can wake up to the small things that they throw at people because they might not think like, oh, you know, how's the weather up there would be that offensive, right. but it stacks up on kids, and, and it's, uh, hopefully people are a little more conscious of the things they say. Yeah. yeah. And luckily, she finds Stig. Yeah. For a little bit. Yes. Um, yes, of course. A, a similarly tall Swedish foreign exchange student. Yeah, who loves musical theater too. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> Yeah. So take me into becoming him because he has an accent. Yes. So what kind of work did you do to get that Swedish accent? Just yeah, right? you know, um, when I got the uh, the size for the audition, it said Swedish accent. I was like, oh boy, I don't know how I'm going to do that. But um, I loved Avicii and, um, you know, rest in peace. But he was fantastic and he had a lot of videos of interviews and of um, like behind the scenes studio stuff. And I would watch him and I'd watch the way he moved his mouth and, and how he like, his, his oral posture basically and I would just practice saying what he would say and then play it back I got close enough and then I got a dialect coach to fine-tune it and I also did some research just on like Swedish high schools and things like that because I felt like if I could really understand what it was like there I could do it authentically because I don't want to offend anybody or anything like that so was there a certain word or phrase that like when you nailed it you're like oh I got this accent down oh no you know it's funny I I went about it at first, and then as I started training, it's all about how your oral posture is. It's where you like put your tongue in your mouth and, and your teeth and all that. And once you like find that, you can say anything, basically. Yeah. So what was the vibe like on set? This was your first film. Yeah. Oh, so what was fantastic. that experience like for you? I mean, I lucked out. Yeah. I, I have absolutely nothing to complain about. We went to New Orleans. It was fantastic. I ate so much. <laughs> I ate an unbelievable amount of fried food. Um, it was great, and everyone was so kind, and, and the producers and the directors were so good, and the cast was so good, and I think it's because it's such an uplifting film. I mean, it's something like I'm proud for my grandmother to watch, you know what I mean? It's one of those like really nice family films, and I think that made it a really nice environment on set, because everyone became a family. What was it like working with Ava Michelle? She really does oh, an wonderful. amazing job yeah. in this role. No, she's fantastic, and I, I think, you know, she, like, like all of us, has been through bullying for her height. Um, and so, you know, we, we connected on that level, and she's a fantastic musician as well, so we spent a lot of time off screen doing music together. Did yeah. you ever get bullied about your height? You're pretty tall. I, I did. But it might yeah. be different for guys, right? No, it's, it's, it's interesting. I was, I was bullied because I had longer hair um, and because I was skinny. So, I mean, a lot of people would be like, oh, you look like a girl. And it's funny because that stuff I thought, like, oh, now I'm in a movie, you know what I mean? And, like, I'm in LA, I'm doing the modeling and all this stuff. That'll go away. And it's funny because this trailer came out, and the top comment was, oh, that blonde guy looks like a girl. And it's so funny because it's on an anti-bullying movie. And I realized something. And it's like, my mom used to always say, it's going to get better. Like, people are going to stop. It'll get better. It'll get better. 
It doesn't. It doesn't get better, but you get better. So now I can read those things, and it doesn't hit me as hard. And I, I, I hope that people who are going through high school can realize, like, there is always going to be bullies, but you get better, and you evolve, and you become more um, resilient to these things, and you realize the things that set you apart or it makes you stand out. Yeah. It's not a negative thing. Right. Yeah. That's one thing I liked about Stig is he's obviously this, you know, foreign exchange student. Everybody right. wants to hang out with him, and he's right. really cool, but yeah. he's also battling his own insecurities Absolutely. in high school based on where he came from. So right. it kind of shows that everybody has stuff that they're trying to overcome. Yeah, and no, I, I, lo I love Stig. He reminds me so much of, like, a golden retriever. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He just comes to America, and he's so wide-eyed, and he's kind of just jumping on every opportunity he can to fit in. And I think that's that's really true to a lot of, um, at least my high school experiences. We do so many things to try to be cool, and we end up losing what makes us cool. Yeah. You know? Was that interesting for you to step back into that high school mentality? Yeah. Obviously, you're not in high school anymore. Right. Was it fun to go back and just replay it in, in a different role, or did yeah. it make you kind of relive your experience at all? No, that's a good question. It's funny because um, I'm the only one from this cast that actually went to a high school because everyone else was either homeschooled or you know did a different route of schooling. And so I'm like showing around, I'm like, oh yeah, no, this is how a locker combination works and stuff like that. Um, so I, I had a blast. It reminded me a lot of my high school, actually. Yeah. On terms of height, have you, you're pretty tall. Yes. Like six. Two, yeah, six three, yeah. Six three. Have you ever dated a woman taller than you? That's probably. No, no, point. I haven't. But Would I, you? Of, of course. I mean, well, I think that it doesn't matter, you know, your vertical height, it's your depth, you know, it's what's inside that, that counts. Yeah. Um, and how I, I, th I think that that's another good lesson of the movie is. I think a lot of the characters in this get lost in, in the physical aspects or the popularity, but it's like they lose out on the right person because they're not looking on how deep that person goes. Like you said, that's something that is always going to be there. Unfortunately, Absolutely. you go on like dating apps and you see all this playing out and you're just kind of hoping people can figure out. It's like, it's really about the person. It is. It doesn't matter how tall somebody is it or is. how much they weigh or, right. but it's like a hard, it's a message that I think we have to be constantly reminded of. Of course. Unfortunately. Yeah. And, and those things are all super fleeting and it's, it's really how honest your connection is with someone. That's the most important, I believe. You also sing in the movie a little bit. Yes, yeah. So I know you're also a musician. Yeah. Um, yeah. But was it intimidating to sing in, in those circumstances on a set with all those people around? Um, it was for the accent yeah. because I, I d had to do a lot of careful like vowel placement to find how Stieg would sing because you know when you sing you you lose a lot of your your accent so um, that was daunting but the song was really nice and it's from musical theater which of course I love and. Um, yeah, and it was great because Ava um, and I both play the piano. And so on the days that we were recording that song, in between takes, instead of going to our trailers, we just sat and played on the piano all day. So it was, yeah, it was one of my favorite days on set, to be honest. You also play the guitar, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So take me a little bit through your musical journey. Sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, I always loved music. And like I said, I, I wanted to be an author. Um, so what drew me into music was songwriting and lyricism. I used to take the liner notes, ironically, with Sleeping With Sirens, one of my favorite bands growing up. And I used to take some of the, the liner notes and just read the lyrics all day. And I was like, that's a good song. And so I got into music through songwriting. And then when I moved to Los Angeles, I met Gus, who's my musical partner. And we're in a band, Voila. Um, and so that's been really fun, finding that sound and, and just writing songs that are more and more honest to, to our life experience. Yeah. So what would be sort of the perfect combination for you as far as modeling, acting, music? I mean, is there one that really draws you in more or do you want to do yeah. just all three? I, I think I want to I want to do as much as I can. And like I said, it's, it's all storytelling and we all tell stories in different ways. And I, I want to explore all the different avenues. Um, and so far, I, I've been able to do it. So I'm going to continue on that path. But um, what's nice about music is when no one's casting something or whatever, I, I can pick up the guitar anytime. I can write a song in the green room here. So that's really nice for me. Yeah. You had a, a song came out today. today. Yeah. What's it called? It's called Mama Sita. It's with Lexi Pantera. Um, and I, I, it's a really fun song right at the end of summer. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the vibe of it? What kind of genre does it You know, it, I um, grew up playing flamenco guitar. So I brought in some of those Latin so inspired. You've got this whole thing Of down. course. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yeah. And so I, um, we're bringing a lot of Latin elements to the song. And it's fun. Yeah. yeah. Are you working on a bigger like album or anything that we could yeah. see kind of down um, So it kind of lines up with the movie. We have a song in two weeks from now again. And then the EP two weeks following after that. It's called Deja Vu. That's exciting. Yeah. And so uh, with acting. Yes. 
are there more roles in your future or have you thought about what sort of projects you would want to be a part of? Yeah, yeah. I mean, th there's always stuff in the works. Um, so I'm looking forward to being able to talk more about that. But um, yeah. And then there's Family Reunion, which is yeah. another show on Netflix. I am um, have an episode in, so I'm excited about that. And that's a great project. Yeah. That's part of the uh, Strong Black Lead initiative that yeah. Netflix does, which I think is a great project so and shows a lot of diversity. Yeah. Yeah, I talked to Loretta Devine, actually. Oh, yeah. About, great. She yeah, came cool. here and I was like, I got to check out a couple episodes oh, of that good. show. And it's such a like... Uh, harken back to like the 90s family yeah, sitcom. Fantastic. So funny and like what a talented oriented. group of people working on that show. Really, really cool. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. What does your family think about all of this? Because I'm also from the Midwest and oh, cool. it's just like, I think extra kind of special. Yes, I'm from a it small is. town in Wisconsin. Um, and it's funny because my, my parents are the, no matter what I do, the thing they're the most proud of is that I have manners. I'm a gentleman. So whenever I call them to tell them about something, they're always like, but are you drinking your water? Are you being nice? Are you opening car doors? You know, that's what's more important to them. And I, I love them for that because I think there's a lot of talented people in the world, but there's not enough kind people. So I owe that all to my parents, and I'm, I feel very fortunate for that. Yeah, I've noticed on your Instagram, you often say, like, take time to call yeah. your parents. Call your mom. Or, like, connect. Why is that something that you want to put out there so uh, consciously? Yeah, I mean, uh, to be honest, my, my father is, is suffering with cancer, and that woke me up to a lot of things. And I think I realized that uh, life moves so fast, and we forget where we came from, and I'm guilty of it. And what I wouldn't do to go back a few years and call my dad more would be fantastic and so I just want to help other people who have you know a set of healthy parents to just call your mom call your dad they love to hear from you they're so proud of you and I think that's really really important yeah, yeah. what else I mean that's such an amazing message what yeah. else do you sort of do to balance yourself because I would imagine like you know being in the modeling industry right. being in entertainment there's a lot of stress a lot of right. pressure what else do you do to sort of like recalibrate and keep you know keep in touch with Luke I guess right um again I, I have other things I'm very passionate about um Domestic violence is one of those things. Um, I think I've spent so much time around love songs and romantic movies, um, and it frustrates me that, that some people don't understand the definition of love and are, and are being hurt from it, um, especially in my city of Milwaukee. So I'm, I'm working very hard um, to, to try to find a way to help these, these women and men, of course, yeah. So love seems to be a common theme for you. It sure is. Have you ever written a script about love, or like have you, because it seems uh, like yeah. that would be organic. Yeah, I mean, of course, some poetry and, and music. Um, I studied screenwriting a bit in college. Um, but yeah, I do, I do love children's stories, too. That Something about them just draws me in. I, I grew up loving Dr. Seuss and, and rhyming, and I think that's also my love for, for songwriting, but I, I like sticking to that lane, too. I love that. You're yeah. really like a renaissance man. Oh, I, it's, thank it's you. It's cool to see just all the different things you're doing yeah. in this film, I think, a lot of people are going to love. So oh, yeah. Congrats on all of it. Thank you so much. Before we go, we do have a couple of questions. That's great. Uh, the first one. Hello. Hey. So as a musician and yes. a music lover, yeah. um, I was wondering, did you have a song that got you pumped up or got you like into character while filming? Oh, that's a that's an excellent question. Um, I mean, I went Swedish. I went ABBA and I went Avicii and I, I, I went right for it. Nice. Uh, yeah. And then, of course, in New Orleans, there's so much good jazz music. So, I, yeah, I, I went. Um, I had a lot of gumbo and a lot of jazz. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great question. And do we have one more? Hey. Um, we have a question from Build Series. Someone's asking, um, what advice would you give to first-time actors, and how did you prepare for your role? Oh, cool. Uh, what advice would I give to first-time actors? I th well, I think um, they always say the best actor is the most empathetic person on the planet. So I think to, to, to start out in acting, you have to really look at everyone and see something in them that is in yourself. You know, and, and uh, especially with the characters. And I think, like, you know, I never studied abroad, but I look at Stieg and I'm like, he went to an environment that was unlike anything he's been before. And that's me going from small town Wisconsin to Los Angeles. So I was able to find that in, uh, in Stieg and in myself. And it's so much easier to bring out the flavors of a character, I think, if you find them in yourself. Yeah. And just remembering that we're all people, we all have sensitivities, we're all Absolutely. struggling every day, which this movie does such a good job of reminding right. people is that right. you really don't know what somebody's going through, and it's just nice to have empathy. Of course. Well, love is, is really just understanding someone's trauma yeah. and being able to comfort them through it. Yeah. Well, congrats on Tall Girl. Thank you. Uh, it's going to be available Friday, September 13th yes. on Netflix, so make sure you check it out and put your hands together for Luke Eisner. Thank you so much. <laughs>